Hi, I'm Catherine Maniman, your host for 843 TV. And today we're at the Hilton Head Island Bluffton Chamber of Commerce. And we're going to sit down and learn a couple things about hurricanes and all the fun summer events that are happening on Hilton Head Island and Bluffton. Our guests today are Tom Dunn, Emergency Management Coordinator for Hilton Head Island, and we also have Charlie Clark, who is the Vice President of Communications for Hilton Head Island Bluffton Ch Chamber of Commerce. So stick around for this episode of 843 TV, where communities come to speak. Eight four three TV, where the Low Country comes to speak. Eight four three TV, where communities come to speak. Welcome to Eight four three TV, and today we are with Tom Dunn, who is the Emergency Coordinator for Hilton Head Island. And Tom, it's the hurricane season, it's June. So before we get into that, I want to find out a little bit more about you and your professional career and how did you get here? Sure, my, my background's in public safety. I was a firefighter in the city of Alexandria for almost 13 years um, and transitioned to emergency management and uh, went to work for the Commonwealth of Virginia for, for several years as their emergency planner. I was the state planner was, was my title there. And then the opportunity came to, to come down to Hilton Head, so I, I jumped at that opportunity. Well, wow, that's great. So hurricane season, let's talk mm -hmm. about it, because, you know, for 100 years we didn't have one. Right. But we've had mm -hmm. a couple in the last few. Mm -hmm. um, starting off with, let's say, we have one coming down, what do we do? What's, mm -hmm. what, what's the first thoughts we should say? You know, people say we should go, we should mm -hmm. stay, it's not going to hit us, how bad will it be? Mm -hmm. So sure. I'll let you start. The, the first thing is to pay attention. Um, is to hit, go to the town's website, go to our Facebook page or social media page and, and, and see what we're saying. Because um, we're going to do as much as we can to provide as much information as we can early. Um, and as far as an evacuation goes, uh, obviously the governor makes that call, but you'll want to take the, take the opportunity to pay attention to what we're saying and then leave early. Um, we, want you to, we want you to get off the island and get out of here as soon as you can. So really it's just a matter of listening to what we tell you and follow our instructions and then if you feel like you need to go and you want to go, go. Yeah. Well also I want to point out that Hilton Head has a lot of retired people here sure. and a, a mm -hmm. lot an aging population. Mm -hmm. And again, some people say, oh no, we're going to you know, ride it out because this is a mobility, what do we do? So mm -hmm. what, what's your recommendation? Sure. If you, if you have some limited mobilities and concerns getting out of your home, getting into your car to self-evacuate, uh, give us a call. We will actually we'll come to your house, we'll help you get to your car so you can leave yourself. Um, if you also, uh, Palmetto Breeze has a, uh, a registry that you can go to and register if you can't evacuate yourself. Um, they'll come to your house and they'll pick you up and take you to a pub public shelter. Uh, we prefer you to, to self-evacuate, but that is an option available to, to folks if they want, to, uh, they want assistance evacuating. You know, with the population of the island, and you think about, I'm not even sure what the population of the island, <laughs> and then the tourists is on top right. of it, <laughs> How many days do you think it really takes to sort of, if we really had to clean it off the island, we mm -hmm. all had to go? Is it like a four day project? How many days would that be? Roughly, in a worst case scenario, you're, you're, you're to fully evacuate the island, you we'll plan for 96, 72 to 96 hours to get everybody off the island. Um, fortunately, in the last couple of storms when the evacuations have been called, we haven't had those bumper to bumper um, evacuations that we had in previous events. We were able to, to move folks off, and, and a lot of people heeded the warning and left early, which is key to getting everybody off the island is to leave early. All right. You know, along with hurricanes, there's a couple of other, we have natural events. One is an earthquakes. Yes. And are we, mm -hmm. are we prone to them? We are. We, we are susceptible to all the hazards out there with the exception of volcanoes. <laughs> um, the, the only, and, I, and I've, I've stated that uh, if, if a volcano pops up here, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to retire. I'm going gonna, gonna <laughs> to move on. But, but to your point is uh, we are susceptible to earthquakes, tornadoes, and e even tsunamis are a, a relative, it's a low risk, but there is a risk of tsunamis here. So as we, okay, June to October, um, what can we do to tell our, our, our viewers um, what to, to prepare themselves in the house? What do they need to have? Mm -hmm. They need water, batteries, things like that? Absolutely. The, the thing I tell folks is to start and start simple. Don't, don't make it complicated. Uh, start your planning process no different than you would for an, a, a vacation or, or a day trip. You think about where you're going. You think about getting your fuel. You think about, you know, how much is it going to cost me to go? And what am I going to take with me? Start there. And then work yourself back into a, in a larger plan, having that a gallon of water per person per day, 
um, having a, a three days of food in your emergency kit. But start simple and then build yourself up to it. You don't have to do it all at once. You know, that's a good idea because also I'm thinking about uh, records, like, you know, your, your deeds and all these things, <clears throat> what you do. So you, you make a lock box or something, a traveling mm -hmm. box, and you sort of have it by the door or something? Is that Absolutely. There's, there's multiple What do you do ways. for banking? Mm -hmm. I mean, all the, those important mm -hmm. documents because you don't want them to get wet. Absolutely. Multiple things you can do. Um, what I do is we have um, the paper files are in a filing cabinet and all the folders are, are one color, they're red. So when it comes time to, evac time to evacuate, grab the red folders, put them in a box and take them, and my wife takes them with her. Uh, we also keep them, a lot of those things electronically. So there's a thumb drive with all those documents in it. And another thing you could do is take that thumb drive and give it to someone else. You know, I have a, a family member in Virginia, so they have a copy of all those documents in, in their safe at, in Virginia. So if something happens to our copy, we have, we have redundant copies. I, you know, and what other tips? I mean, these are really good. Mm -hmm. I never even thought mm -hmm. about that stuff. So can you give us some more tips <laughs> because this is important. I really want sure. to be ready to go. You'd rather than having mm -hmm. that last minute crazy. Right. Um, tell us more. Sure. Well, one of the biggest things is, is, to, is to plan to go. Don't just do it at the last minute. Think about where you're going and have multiple options. You know, for my family, we have three different options. Um, one's far away, one's with family, and one's relatively close. We have multiple options to, to, to go. And call the hotel, see how many rooms are there, tell them you're, you know, that's an evacuation point you're looking at, figure out the costs, budget for those costs, plan for those, those costs when you, when you evacuate. You know, think, think about it, you know, map out where you're going, because you may have limited cell service, but you want to have a paper map of where you're going to go. Hmm, interesting. You know, also the, the other angst to this evacuation is where to go. Exactly. Because uh, you never know, and sometimes, in fact, mm -hmm. my family got caught into a situation where the hurricane came through. Mm -hmm. Some happened, not so bad, but where they ended up was in a hotel like three hours away, right. and they lost electricity for three days, right. and they were stuck. Yes. So that's also <laughs> part of the angst to the whole thing. So That, that, that is a challenge. The, the, what I tell folks is go far enough away to where you're comfortable that you know there's going to be things to do because you may be there for several days. You know, go to Nashville, go to, you know, go to another place that's well inland that may have things for you to do and, things, and, and will have the services that you're going to need. Don't, don't necessarily think I just need to go an hour away. Go, go, go as far as you feel comfortable going. Yeah, maybe take a vacation. Exactly, it's a mini vacation. That's a good idea mm -hmm. too. All right, so tsunamis, not so much. We're, we're okay without that. It, is, it is possible. <laughs> uh, earthquakes, have we ever had one? Uh, yes, we do have your earthquakes in South Carolina on a fairly regular basis. Um, we had one literally a couple of days before Matthew made landfall over just across the county line in Colleton County. Very small earthquake, but, but still an earthquake. And I believe last year there was 12 to 13 earthquakes in, in, in South Carolina on, on the eastern seaboard. And we actually, could we feel them or are they just so quiet? I mean, uh, they were small enough that we didn't feel them here. But uh, the modeling shows another significant earthquake in Charleston will do substantial damage here in the here in the Low Country. Really? Yes. Oh wow! Isn't that interesting? So I'm learning so much. So what else do we need to know? <laughs> All of a sudden, the conversation is going from hurricanes to tsunamis to earthquakes. Um, well, you know, I think all every other tips that you've given us this morning has been very mm -hmm. helpful. Awesome. I am just in my mind thinking files. Lockbox, mm -hmm. water, right. elderly. You know, it's nice to know that that service is available to come help you evacuate because mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people know that right. either. Mm -hmm. And the firemen can come, always come over and help you as well, yes? Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. So they're all the resources for us. Mm -hmm. Yes. What, else can we, what else can we share with our viewers? Well, I think uh, we, we've got some great resources with the town. We have uh, a preparedness guide that covers all hazards. Um, so that it, in, the, in, the, in the guide, there's information on all the hazards we face and there are checklists on how to begin to prepare. Um, that's available on the town website in uh, an electronic form, but it's also available at every fire station and every town facility, other town facility, in English and in, in Spanish. So that those those resources are available. Well, you know, I think what's, there's what else we can share with our viewers is that um, this summer is hot yeah. weather. What can we do for our visitors who are <laughs> here as well? well? The biggest thing is, is stay hydrated. Pay attention to the to the weather. You know, stay hydrated. Use sunscreen. Uh, if you're going to the beach, take an umbrella, stay under the umbrella, but hydration, hydration is the key. Yeah, and what do you recommend for that a day for a person? Is there some sort of recommendation for uh, that? You know, no, I don't necessarily have a recommendation, but just uh, personally myself, I just have a bottle of water with me most all day long and just continue to stay hydrated all day long. What about the heat index as well? Mm -hmm. As we know, just thinking about right. this before we, because we have a couple more minutes and mm -hmm. seconds left, is there a heat index 
concerned. So we're out on the beach, you know, it's mm -hmm. 102 degrees and the humidity mm -hmm. is this. Is there anything that we should be worried mm -hmm. about for us, for our health? Uh, not necessarily from a, a heat index level, but I would say pay attention to what the heat index is. You know, just just a couple of weeks ago, you know, we were well over 100 degrees with the heat index. So it's a matter of just paying attention and understand your health and where you are. You know, if you're if you're if you're not as healthy as as a as a you know a 16 year old, you may not want to go to the beach when it's 100 and 107 degrees outside with the with the heat index. So just pay attention and and, and be be smart about it. All right, okay. Well, Tom, you've been great. You gave mm -hmm. us so much great information, and we will be right back with 843 TV.